I thought self-worth was like, are you confident or are you not? I'm like, I don't have a problem with self-worth. I'm confident as Look at me, look at me. Someone with a million dollars isn't gonna come with a suitcase saying, hey, here you go for free seats, no strings mm -hmm. attached. I have to work on the things that are holding me back in my marriage, my personal life. Those can be painful things. How have we never discussed this? I feel like we have. because we've never done drugs <laughs> yeah, together. because we've never done mushrooms together. The depth of which I have watched us both transform over the last year alone is wild. No, absolutely wild. Like I am not her or her or her or her anymore. I know that I'm powerful, and I also know that I give my power away a lot. I don't want to go there, but right. I know I can't avoid it. Right. Wait, will he be so mad if we tell no. this story? who cares? <laughs> <laughs> it's God and mushrooms. <laughs>
felt weirder than to walk into your office when I was at the co-working space and see you and be like, oh, that's the girl I decided was going to be <laughs> friends with me. Because then you start to think, that's weird. Or what if she actually thinks I'm right. a total psycho? And I think I I like went kind of a back route way because I was like, hey, I heard you do branding. I, I want to create. So you created actually our first cover art for the yeah. podcast. Yeah. I didn't even... I think put that together, just like how much you've actually been a huge part of like the growth of this podcast. Cause the very first cover art was what we hired your agency yeah. for. Yeah. And I remember being like, we got to up level the Instagram too. Are you down with that? And I know. Like, like, yeah, anything. I didn't even know I could have that level, <laughs> yeah. but that's a perfect parallel. I think just for like the expansion that totally. came along and Hannah and I actually just recorded a podcast about this too. I think especially in this last year, when we started to like really go through these seasons of some pretty deep emotional challenges and being willing to be vulnerable, you've been the friend to mirror to me like the power of vulnerability and like the beauty in vulnerability and how strong I see you in those moments where you're sharing just so authentically like what you're going through. It's been the biggest expander for me. It's been life changing. You know, to have you reflect that back to me right now in this season of life is actually special because it's really hard for me to be vulnerable, but you make me feel safe. Now I feel really safe, like butt naked safe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Being like you could, I could tell you everything and not feel like what the hell. <laughs> um, like I was literally crying in your living room last week saying nothing means nothing. And you're like, it's okay. We were just going with it. We're like, yes. yeah, we know, sweetie, we know. <laughs> and um, I say that to say that like, it's really hard for me to be vulnerable. But when I look at what's blossomed from the vulnerability is this really beautiful friendship where we can both be co-vulnerable together and both grow together and like navigate like these deep trenches together but then also fucking like trenches. celebrate the, the fucking trenches but also celebrate the wins together too so let's catch everybody up to speed i'm trying to even remember i should have gone back to see what part of your story we were telling on the last podcast because it's we've evolved even since then no no shocker because this right. is a constant process right. but tell the listeners everybody listening where are you currently at in like your business journey because you that's like been I think the initial catalyst totally. for a lot of like change and then buyer beware because when you decide <laughs> yeah. you want to expand professionally it's going to send you down a whole this other rabbit hole right. of personal expansion but catch yeah. us up to speed on business wise so up catching you up to speed the interesting thing is that I feel like where we've left off was shutting down my agency mm -hmm. and I spoke to the powerhouse women community about transition which is where butterfly season was birthed and Butterfly Season is my podcast where we celebrate the beauty and the transformation. Now, from that point, I started a jewelry brand called White. And what exposed itself in my journey of shutting down my agency was that I had to work on codependence, self-worth. And at the time, I didn't really know what that meant, but I knew that it was something that I had to work on because it was like a you know, when you're like scrolling on TikTok and I'm like, do you do this? Do you do this? Do you do this? Well, then you're codependent. It's like a late night infomercial, yes. but on TikTok. But on TikTok, I, <laughs> my husband's like a little bit dyslexic. And so I always pull up those like tests on TikTok and I'm like, tell me if you pass or not. <laughs> it's like that, but for codependence, really. Mm -hmm. And um, now where I'm at is I realize that I have done so much in my life. I'm an Enneagram three, like achiever, doer for any of my listeners that are into human design. I'm a projector. And so those people kind of aren't the same. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've been reconciling with since we've last spoken. And when I mean that, I mean like we as in the powerhouse women community. Yeah. And what's come up for me is that with codependence and self-worth, like I thought self-worth was like, oh, I'm confident. Like, yeah, are you confident or are you not? I'm like, I don't have a problem with self-worth. I'm confident as fuck. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> right? But it's really not about that. And so what I realized is that I would attach my worth to things. Mm -hmm. to, like things where there's a common idea in terms of how what we think about those things. So like Forbes 30 under 30. I don't have to say anything to anyone. I know that at least most people in the room think that's a big deal. Yeah. And so if I have this big deal, then I feel like I'm worthy because I you think that's worthy and I have it. So yeah. A plus B equals C. Mm -hmm. 
Now, working through that has exposed that my jewelry brand was something that I attach my worth to. And you can be really good at something, but it doesn't mean that you should do it. And that I think is the hard part in entrepreneurship or understanding, okay, if I am struggling with self-worth, where is that actually coming from? Where was like the villain origin story, if you will, that triggered you to create this coping mechanism to keep yourself feel safe? Mm -hmm. And mine was when I was a little girl, my mom was a single mom. Like we grew up, you know, in a not great community with not a lot of money. And my mom was working two jobs, also going to school, like all of the things. Right. And so she couldn't come to my cheer practice and or competitions or things like that. And sometimes she didn't want to probably because she was tired doing a lot of things. And I internalized that as like she doesn't love me. And in order to receive love from my mom, I need her to like see how good I am. Mm. And in order for her to see how good I am, I need to be the best in the room because then a parent or a friend or somebody will then tell her and then she'll see how good I am. So that's where this like accolade goal driven situation came from. But that's also where I gave my power of my self worth to other people. Yeah. And then I go throughout life doing that same thing. And it like works for you until it doesn't. Ugh. And okay, actually remind me if I'm correct, this realization, I almost like picture this, it's like we just pull this little yeah. thread on a sweater and you're like, mm, just let me just pull this. But then before you realize you've unraveled the whole sweater, it's now a crop top. <laughs> yeah. It's like you just keep unraveling it. Did that start when you first started microdosing? Um, that insight about the codependency or when, what was the catalyst to that? Also, let's talk about microdosing because yes. I want to hear. Shrooms, I love them. <laughs> no, actually another divine friendship. Um, <laughs> oh, I remember now. Yes. yes. The realization about codependency was someone, a friend of mine, her name is Lizzie, like one of my best friends, literally, we were not friends at this time, told me, <laughs> you're codependent. I said, I don't fucking know you. Like you didn't actually not know her. No, that well. I just met her. I just met her. I so happened to have sat next to her on the bus at an entrepreneurship mastermind because you're trying to get to know people and don't sit next to people that you don't know that you know <laughs> I shouldn't have sat next to her I mean I should have it changed my life for the better but yeah. she was like you're codependent and she could see it in me because mm -hmm. she had it in herself mm -hmm. she had had similar experiences in business and in life and truthfully she was trying to help me but like mm -hmm. the delivery you have to keep in mind the recipient yeah when you're delivering yeah. something especially if you want it to land but when I realized actually in terms of self-worth was through mushrooms mm -hmm. and the beautiful thing about mushrooms is I feel like it just like lands difficult planes easier sometimes yeah. it doesn't it just depends on like what journey you, is for you and that's what I realized through microdosing mm -hmm. for someone who's listening to this and I'm just I'm literally thinking me I'm like the most sheltered yes. hasn't ever <laughs> yeah. like smoked anything that's me of our yeah. friend group yeah so for someone who's listening to this and doesn't understand, like maybe microdosing gets thrown around, like what is that actually? Because it's, I've heard so many, so many friends have yeah. like used it as this powerful tool. Yeah. And this is not like pro or against, like this is really just saying there might be people listening who this could be a, an Want more access. information yeah. for sure. Uh, the one thing I will say, depending upon what age you're listening at, there is research out there that shows that if you are, especially a male, a younger male, um, like younger twenties, I probably wouldn't do it until I was like 30 plus mm. just because your brain is still developing and there's something to do with men. I'm not a doctor. I don't know. Look it up. Look it up. Um, Internet. Yes. I also wouldn't do it if I was younger than 20 because your brain is still developing or yeah. especially like in high like school, your frontal, your frontal lobe, lobe is still developing, mm -hmm. which is like your long-term decision making in terms yeah. of like cons consequences long-term or something like that. So that's my general disclaimer. I'll talk to your practitioner. But the reason why I love microdosing so much and what it what it is not, which was the question, you're not high on drugs. It's not like if you took an edible. Like when I've taken an edible, I've been like, okay, I can't get up. <laughs> I can't get up. I can't drive. I can't do things. It's not like that at all. You kind of don't even feel it. Although when I first microdosed, I felt like buzzing in my brain. Mm-hmm. And so true fashion, I went to Reddit Obviously. and <laughs> I'm like Googling, like trying to figure out what that means. But when you feel buzzing in your brain and it's not like buzz, like when you're drunk or about mm. to like get drunk, it's like, it was just like energy in my brain. And 
it's your brain creating new neural pathways. <gasps> like you could feel it. Yes. I mean, I didn't feel, I, I didn't feel like worms Whoa. like creating. It just <laughs> like was energy in, right? the, in the brain. Yeah. So beautiful. So you're not supposed to feel it. Mm. Although I can kind of feel like, I don't know, just like high vibe. Mm -hmm. um, I never feel like I'm coming down on anything. I also feel like I can see, not literally, but I feel like I could see my subconscious thoughts and then I can choose what to do with them. Because mm -hmm. all day we're thinking things like I'm sure you've been driving and been like nothing happened, but all of a sudden I'm in a bad mood. It's just like your 100%. mind is taking you to a place yeah. and then you kind of have to trace back. What was I thinking? Oh, then this triggered me to think about this, then that, then mm. this. While I'm microdosing, I feel like I can hear or see my thoughts better. So to choose, do I want to throw this away? Or is there something in here for me to address and do deeper work on mm -hmm. to have more awareness about myself so that if I'm ever in a circumstance similar to the one that I just thought, I'm not actually choosing that negative behavior. Right. I'm choosing a positive pattern that can produce a more fruitful outcome. Mm. I'm almost like, this isn't what you're saying, but in my mind, it's almost like it's slowing down to be able to make like a more conscious choice. Yes. Again, this is like my interpretation of yes. when I've heard people describe how it's really mm -hmm. helped them. And the beautiful thing about that, at least for me, is I feel like from there you can kind of move away some of the like, I don't know, mess, muck, picture like a whiteboard and you're just kind of erasing it to like start kind of fresh or see, see things better. And I feel like people get creativity out of it or things. Mm -hmm. I also feel like whatever intention you set, you kind of get just uh, generally in yeah. life, but especially on mushrooms. Just magnifies mm -hmm. it. So I do microdosing in tandem with therapy. Yeah. And sometimes if I'm feeling like, you know, like I want to be extra creative mm -hmm. and I'll microdose with the intention of pulling out my creativity. Mm -hmm. I literally will speak the intention over the mushrooms, eat them, and then just allow whatever needs to come, come. Mm -hmm. Same thing with like bigger doses of mushrooms. Yeah. I will talk to them for a week. Wait, really? Yes. How have we never discussed this? I feel like we have. because we've never done drugs <laughs> together. because we've never done <laughs> mushrooms together. Okay, so um, the last time I did a hero's dose was with my husband. Him and I will do them together. And we put them in our like manifestation room with our boards. And we were like, hey, this is what we're like working on. We would love to like work through what's holding us back mm. from getting these things. Now be careful with that. Buyer beware. Buyer be fucking aware. <laughs> I mean, it's beautiful, but like when you want something in life, God yeah. doesn't just, well, he does. Cause you did show up at my door. Sometimes he delivers. Sometimes he will be like, you know what? You're going to work for this. Here I'll give is. you one. I'll give <laughs> you a pass. <laughs> Although I could use a freebie right now, God, but he doesn't always give you what you want. He'll yeah. give you the circumstances that create the pressure for you to create the skill that will give you the tools to create what you want. Mm. And so when I'm in our manifestation room on a board that has these big ass dreams, someone with a million fucking dollars isn't going to come with a suitcase saying, hey, here you go for freezies, no mm -hmm. strings attached. I have to work on the things that are holding me back in my marriage, my personal life, my relationships with people, how I show up, where I'm actually giving my power away. And those can be painful things, especially when you don't have awareness around them yet. Because mm -hmm. you go from awareness to, you go from unaware to aware. To really effing aware. To really aware. And then you have to unlearn the bad behavior, the negative coping mechanisms to relearn the positive ones to then apply those to your life. Like th that can be hard, hard work. So when people are microdosing, like I want to do mushrooms, I'm always like, I feel like mushrooms will come to you when they're ready. Mm -hmm. When people are like, I want to, I'm like, woo, careful what you wish for. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It has been. And I feel like I have gotten to live vicariously through so many of your experience says because we've developed like that level of we just kind of go right to I think within three minutes of you walking in here today, I was like, here's what's really going on. <laughs> yeah. And it's beautiful. Here's the beautiful part. Here's the part where I'm meeting a new part of myself and right. it's fucking hard. And it's 
I don't want to go there, but I know I can't avoid it. Right. One of the things that I think has been especially beautiful in this season is we are freakishly in a similar season with our significant others. Mm -hmm. We are married to the most magnificent men. Who are also so freakishly similar to each other. So freaking similar. Like uh, when you talked about the manifestation board, I remembered about that Kim also got his wish. Oh my out of god, this. he did! Wait, will he be so mad if we tell no, this story? Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I care about you, Lamazi. I love you so we much. We love you. Um, so he is an introvert, but mm-hmm. when you get to know him, you're like, wow, He's you're actually the funniest, funny. coolest, most entertaining, literally, deep, literally coolest guy I've ever met. But like, he doesn't give that away to a lot of people. No. Like, I, only a handful He's of people have ever cool. seen that. Yeah. <laughs> And people are like, you're so cool. I'm like, well, Cam helps me. Um, (laughs) On his goal list was to make one new friend. Like, because more than one would be a big ask for him. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the year, sure as hell, he checked it off because Elliot was his like. (laughs) Didn't didn't you say he walked in the office and like crossed it out on the whiteboard and wrote Elliot's name? Yes, yes, (laughs) yes. Really still like want to cry when I think about that. I know. It's it's beautiful. I think what's beautiful about it is realizing that like in this season, there's so many dynamics in both of our relationships that are similar. And it's so much easier sometimes to see the mirror than it is to see the pattern like in in your own dynamic, Mm -hmm. in your own relationship. And one of the things that has happened is not only have we both been going through crazy transitions in our, our relationship to work, being achievers, trying to sell the fuck down a little bit, then both of our husbands have had a huge career shift to where they were starting brand new things. And we found ourselves as like the like primary, not just primary breadwinner, like the only one bringing in income and just like the things it's triggered for both of us to be able to like look at and and unpack. I don't even have a question in there. I'm like, just thank you. (laughs) Thank you for being. Well, it's, it's, here's the thing. When even when we go back to those intentions that Cam and I set at the beginning of the year, like these are our goals, this is what we want. Well, what unearthed from that moment and awareness that we didn't have was that our polarities were off. Mm -hmm. And so if we want this divine union and to be super happy and like to have children, raise children to be even better than like how we were, right? Like a lot has to happen and that's within the marriage. And Mm so you know, Cam played in the NFL. He played football, football professionally. He was the primary caretaker, breadwinner, all the things for so long. And then I got a chance to like work on my baby business while he was doing that. And then over time, the roles reverse. And then it's in that role reversal where you're like, okay, hold on. Like, let's, how do we write this ship in a way that honors both of our journeys and our growth together? But that sounds really beautiful was there is like tension when your yin's not yangin, right? And you can have like a really beautiful marriage, but you're like, Hey, something is still off. Mm -hmm. So I will say my reflection for the last year, 2023, the best thing that's come out of it is how much my marriage has grown. Same. Like when I look at all the other things I wrote down on that board, there is nothing that I'm more proud of. I mean, I didn't do very well on my achieving all the things, probably because I should not be working that hard. Projectors, if you're listening, you know. But because we just worked at riding the ship. Mm-hmm. And so you, we've kind of been there when the ship wasn't right. And it's like pictured trying to turn a ship fucking around. Like that's hard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Patterns preconceived ideas like all of that is like stuff that you have to work through and make a conscious decision to choose something different to get a different outcome that process is where people get stuck yeah because you do the thing that is so familiar to you even if it's uncomfortable you would rather do it because it's safer than who knows what's on this side yeah even though like your best shit is on that side Mm. and especially in a marriage where like I see the same for you and Cam. It's like there's so much about it that is like deep and comfortable and like grounded in such love that it's not like this isn't going well so something has to change. It's like what if I I think I need to change something and then it throws away like the beauty that we had. Right. And it's like this is the same in growth in any area of life and I feel like this is what we've like helped one another like really lean into is – Not being afraid because at that point you can only see what you would lose, what you're giving up. Right. You can't actually see, like you said, all the 
good stuff that's on the other side, but there's this undeniable feeling that you're supposed to lean into this lesson yeah. and learn something about yourself that's going to reveal a new you. Totally. And when you bring that into a dynamic with like the person you love most in the world, and luckily both of them are pretty on board. They're pretty used to us yeah. just being like, yes. <laughs> here's what I'm transforming now. But it's been like unbelievably expansive to have that safe space to also be able to process and say, I couldn't say this to anybody else. And I would never want it to come off as like, I would never want to say something that would have other people view Elliot differently. Cause right. I know it's actually not about him. It's me. Yes. I am bumping up against my own patterns yes. and like my own frustration with myself yep. for why like for me, it was like not feeling fully supported to like the depth of being supported when I wouldn't let him. Yeah. Like I've got me. I've got it. Right. So like un unpacking a lot of that, rewiring a lot of that has been so brutal and so beautiful I know. on the other side. I and I think we went through it faster because we went through it together. No, seriously. Really. That's how things happen. It's mm -hmm. like when you have someone that's kind of reflecting something back to you and then you can workshop things, especially someone who wants the best for you. Mm -hmm. And I know how we're talking about this like with hindsight eyes and a lot of lessons woven into what we're saying. We which sound is, really smart. <laughs> <laughs> we sound like it's easy. Yeah, it um, wasn't. To give a real world example of what that looked like for us was my husband was really ready to have kids. I mean, he's been ready, like mm -hmm. foaming at the mouth, honestly, to have children. Mm -hmm. And I had so much resistance around it and I could not really figure out why I could picture us with like older children, but like being mm -hmm. pregnant, birthing, raising a, like a baby. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't know if that's something that's for me. Yeah. And it's with the help of microdosing and therapy that I realized one of my villain origin stories was that when someone else is added to the picture, I'm loved less. This was through childhood meditation with my therapist after I microdosed and went to hot yoga. Like I was as open as they can be. And my mom was in the house. Like talk about. Oh, so like the energy. energy was there. Yes. Yeah. And which I really feel like we can get into like when people say jump timelines or like how when you change something, the, your whole past changes. Mm -hmm. This is like the craziest shit that happened to me after that. Yeah, day. But yeah. let me tell you Go this there. story with my marriage. So oh. I realized that my mom was a single mom. And when she would have boyfriends, I felt like I was like, I wouldn't sit in the front seat anymore. I would have to sit in the back seat. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to do what Like it wasn't the two of us anymore because she had a partner, but I felt like I was loved less. Mm -hmm. And so when it's the two of us, my husband and I, now I'm in a similar pattern the same thoughts come. Mm. If we add another party, I'm loved less. Yeah. And so it's the awareness. And now the action is, okay, I'm not loved less in my marriage. If I have a child that's made through love and we're not adding another party, like a sexual partner, mm -hmm. right? Like this isn't just some <laughs> random person whose energy we don't know. I mean, I guess technically a baby is like, we don't really know you. We don't really know you yet. We don't know if you're cool. <laughs> We're just getting to know if you belong here. Um, but do you see how mm -hmm. like that can be a difficult conversation? And for some people who don't want to do the work might think, I just don't want kids. Yeah. And it's like, that's not really, I mean, you might think that cause you're trying to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. That's all, all I knew how to do to protect myself was like, okay, only me and my mom, I don't want to be around anyone else. Mm -hmm. Only two people. And think about how that works in like friendships, relationships, yeah. just with girls generally. I'm like, uh, uh three, no, mm -hmm. I'm the odd one out. Mm. So that was a beautiful experience where we can now be on the same page with wanting to have children because it's not actually about what it used to be about which was not yeah. even about children it was just about wanting love yeah but the timeline shift yeah talk okay. about that so i did this meditation it was during christmas time last year uh, my therapist was like i was like well my pa my family's in town like what do you think because i'd never done like a <laughs> meditation like that on mushrooms it was like early in my mushroom career yeah okay? <laughs> uh, i think i started microdosing in november and this was in december okay and so she's like yeah your mom will be there i'm like yeah she's like i think it'll be really great i'm like cool 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 cool, cool. i'll like microdose and then i'll go to hot yoga it'll be beautiful and then i'll meditate and it'll be so great not knowing what was on the other side and <laughs> so she guides me through this meditation i show up in my childhood bathroom 
And she's like, okay, walk out of the bathroom. What do you see? Now I'm in my childhood bedroom and I'm looking at myself as a little girl crying. Mm. And I I forgot this day happened, but I remember that this was a day that happened, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like I've never thought about this day any other day in my life. And I was sitting on the bed crying because my mom made me go to my room because she had her boyfriend over. And I was just, who knows, being a little kid. And that was what I realized in that moment that when two people, when it's more than two, I'm loveless because I'm put out in this room. So that's what came up. And so mm-hmm. she's like, my therapist was like, was like, okay, let's work on this, right? This makes a lot of sense in relation to the kid situation that mm. we've been working on, blah, 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 blah. So I like, well, let me, let me land the plane more beautifully. So then my therapist tells me to ask my little self, what does she want? And I ask her, this was so vivid. Wow. I ask her, she's like a hug. She sits on my lap. I literally could feel, I have my eye mask on sobbing. I could feel like I was hugging somebody. And then all of a sudden my little self disappeared and my therapist goes, she might disappear or she might say she's done with the hug. Like, let me know when you guys are done. And literally she was disappearing. And I was like, how did she know this was going to happen? As if she hadn't done this before. (laughs) And I'm like, okay, she's like disappeared. And then we like guided me back out. And all of a sudden my mom started being real fucking weird. Yeah. Weird. She left early. I remember that. I was mad. Didn't even tell me goodbye. It was like no, the... Like, ghost, she like ghosted She ghosted you me. On like a holiday. Wasn't it like Thanksgiving? Christmas. Yeah. And I was like, what the hell? She goes mm-hmm. home. They didn't feel like they were welcome or whatever. But I'm sorry. After this meditation, she's in the room for three days, quote unquote sick. I'm like, okay. She probably thinks she has COVID. Like, this is so dumb, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Then they leave. And I'm like, whatever. Like, I'm working on myself. Yeah. Right? Like, I'm just like whatever then she reaches out to me a week later and says that when she got home she was meditating or no she didn't say she was meditating she said she was laying on her bed for me i'm like you're meditating you're meditating yeah and that god told her that she has to stop trying to win the way her mom tried to win in every situation with her or else she's gonna push me away she's gonna break me and there's so many broken people in this world that my mom's like contributed to like breaking but that I'm unbreakable and I will just like pull away. Mm -hmm. So she has to stop trying to win. She doesn't have to win. Mm. And she told me that and I took a screenshot. This is unsolicited. And my mom is not like a deep person. Right. This is not something you would normally get a text about. And I took a screenshot. I sent it to my therapist and I'm like, we switched timelines. Like who is this person? But it's like so crazy. It's like Joe Dispenza think that like you can go back in time, heal a version of yourself and everything from that moment has now changed. Mm -hmm. And my mom, I was like, mom, do you know that like I did this meditation and then this happened? And she's like, I remember that day. And I also want to apologize for that day. She remembered the exact day. The exact day. Whoa. I was like, and when I tell you, my mom is like, I can probably count on my hand how many times this woman has apologized to me. She's never, I was shocked. It's God and mushrooms. (laughs) I mean, I feel this, there's a quote, Patrice Washington, who we love, always says your business, and we'll even say like yourself, like you're only going to grow to the extent that you're willing to heal. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when I look at even the versions of us that became friends and everything we were doing was trying to like fill this void through the achievements, which mm-hmm. were great. But I feel this energy about you, but I want you to put it into words how you feel about yourself now. Even and you're still we're still healing lots of stuff. Yes. We are not done by any means. But what's your relationship to yourself now? My relationship to myself. I want to start with how I feel I, how I feel so different that when I show up in spaces that I've been before and I'm not the same, it's really difficult for me to navigate because I'm like, I haven't caught you up to speed. Like I am not her or her or her or her anymore. And I truly feel like you could only meet other people to the depth in which you've met yourself. Mm-hmm. And we've talked about this, but for me, I know I know that I'm powerful and I also know that I give my power away a lot. And I also know that I give it away and I don't know that I'm giving it away. I know that I'm creative and I have amazing gifts that I also 
give away a lot. Like it's just a lot of giving, but for the same thing of receiving love, the same self-worth theme, Mm. the same codependent theme. I just want the people around me to be happy so that I could feel loved. And that's like the wrong pattern. I know that those things about myself before I didn't. And it's one thing to know. I used to like in beginning of therapy, I would tell my therapist, I just like there's someone holding their thumb down on me and I can never get out because something just doesn't want me to succeed and win. And yesterday I was in therapy and I told her I was the thumb. I've been the thumb this whole time. It's actually me. And that relationship with myself, it's not from a place of like being upset or mad or angry. It's just from a place of acknowledging that like when these villain origin stories happen for me to create these coping mechanisms just to keep myself safe was all I knew how to do. And so that is knowing myself in a way that has so much love for all of the versions of me that was just trying to keep myself safe, Mm -hmm. going the wrong way about it. But now I'm like, we know how to keep ourselves safe now in a way that's new over here. We've never done it, but can produce better outcomes. We don't have to be the thumb that's holding myself back. One day you can look at your vision board and be like, wow, I did all of those things in a way that's so aligned with me. I didn't have to sell my soul, give my power away. Like, be codependent on someone else, try to drag someone else's success along with mine. Like I didn't have to do any of those things. Mm -hmm. And I can still have fucking crazy impact doing that. Like that's where I'm at with myself. Mm. I don't actually have anything else to say. (laughs) That, That is, I think the gift we want to not give to other people because it's not ours to give. It's the conversation we want to open the door for more people to hear this, especially if you hear yourself in the achieving, proving, and there's a part of you that's just like, "Eh, there's gotta be a different way. Yeah, and the beautiful thing is like, it's just about curiosity. We're so used to being sold Mm -hmm. scarcity. Mm. It's like, what problem do you solve? What's their pain point? How can you like put salt on their pain point so that they want your offer and they need it so, like it's so scarce, it's Mm. it's so low vibrational. Yeah. That this is actually, just curiosity only. Yeah. Like if you can approach your your internal journey, which eventually ends up directly reflecting to your business success. Yeah. But if you can approach your self-awareness with curiosity, it makes it so much easier because there's no judgment. You're not mad at yourself. And your brain, especially when microdosing, but even when you're not, is only going to show you what you're ready for in this moment. Yeah. And if you're not ready for what comes before the expansion if you're not ready for the cocoon season you're only gonna get little bits and pieces you you won't even get little butterfly wings you'll get like a limp a little gimpy butterfly wing you won't get the big beautiful colorful right and that can also be your journey right it's just like i call it taking another lap like yeah you have do you have a fork in the road we always have decisions that we want to make right you can do the go to the unknown and choose like a more positive coping mechanism Mm -hmm. to get a different result or you can choose what you know which is a negative coping mechanism that you did did when you were a little girl or a little boy just to make yourself feel safe and get the same outcome it's up to you if you want to take another lap but the more laps you take the harder and harder and harder Mm. those situations get we all are listening right now and know that there are patterns in our life that we've repeated 10 plus times over do you want to choose a different path or do you want to take another lap mm-hmm. and just be curious about what that different mm-hmm. path might unfold for you and even not getting down on yourself when you realize you chose the additional lap yeah i mean i i just woke up to the idea or not the idea the fact that i took another lap mm. and i didn't think i did and the beautiful thing when i did my hero's dose with my husband was through that entire journey i had decisions mm. i had a, like so when we'll do it together we'll talk to the mushrooms we'll talk to them for a week then we write down our intentions on a paper we'll take some cacao if you're Thinking about doing mushrooms, you can take some notes on our process. We take some cacao as a heart opener. We read the intentions. We'll tell each other the intentions and we'll take the mushrooms and we'll have orange juice. And then we just sit down on the couch. Mm -hmm. No music, no nothing. No one else's energy to infiltrate anything. Mm -hmm. It's just me and him on our own respective journeys. But sometimes our journeys overlap and we'll communicate to each Mm other. Mm -hmm. And things that were going on in my head around intimacy, sex. I have so much shame. I've had so much shame around it just from things that have happened to me in my past. And I remember 
like having the decision be presented to me. And I can't even explain what does it mean presented. It's not like someone had a presentation was like, here are like two red decisions. Pill, blue pill. Yeah, like it like was just that. a knowing, yeah. right? And so at one point, Cam had said, what's coming up for you? Like, we're just quiet. Like I could close my eyes and see my journey. I could also, when I'm with Cam, at least this most recent time, my eyes are open and I can see a journey going on around him. Sure. But it's not his exact journey, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So with my eyes closed, I could see things and things and whatever. And what was coming up for me was like my first time I felt ugly when I was a little girl and how that's manifested into relationship after relationship after relationship and shame and sex and this whole journey that I was even ashamed to talk about. And so I remember feeling the decision. If he asks you what's coming up for you, you could tell him and work through that, or you cannot tell him and probably have to work through it again. Take another Take lap. another fucking lap. And I'm like, I don't want to tell him about this. I don't want to go through this whole thing. And then all of a sudden he goes, what's coming up for you? And I'm like, like great. <laughs> so glad you asked. No, I'm like, well, um, you know, I feel like we'll have like a really amazing sex life if I work through like all my shame. And he was just like, oh, okay. And I was like, okay, that wasn't so hard, <laughs> right? And then I had more decisions, but that's actually life in general. We all have these like pings in the back of our mind, like do this, do this, stop avoiding this, stop avoiding, they're so quiet and they're so small, mm -hmm. but we know we have them. And the decision to continue to avoid or to not address is just you deciding I'm gonna take another lap because eventually that part of you is gonna boil over and a circumstance in life is gonna force you to deal with it. Mm. Do you want to deal with boiling hot water or just some, a cup of tea? You decide. Yeah. It's like every lap you strap these invisible weights that just like yep. increase the resistance. And yep. then there's like more obstacles yep. that are put in the path yes. on the next lap. Yeah. It's so it's all deep. For the, it's all for your, like the betterment of you. Mm -hmm. It literally is. Like my husband was talking to his dad on the phone and his dad was like, for people who truly don't know Christ or don't know the word might think that God hates them. Because mm -hmm. there are situations in your life, but they're all meant to make you better. Mm -hmm. Like, how else would you get better? Would you voluntarily choose the hard thing to make you better? Not everyone does that. No, no. So this is so much of what your butterfly season, I want to call it a movement. It's so much more than your podcast. There's so much more to it. I want you to talk a little bit about the guided journal that you're creating and just where people can interact more because this like depth of conversation, number one is like, this is the kind of conversations I want to be having on this podcast, <laughs> yeah. but you go into all of these topics so beautifully on your podcast too. So tell us a little bit about the journal, the podcast, where people can have more of you because yeah. everyone's going to want. Yes. Know. So if, if you feel like any of this resonates, the journal would be great. So the journal is called Butterfly Season and it's a guided journal that helps you transmute your suffering into empowerment. So mm. the suffering of cocoon season into an empowered butterfly season. And what does transmute mean? It's that if we can understand, like I keep calling it your villain origin story, but if we can understand like the very first event, what happened, what were you fearful of, what coping mechanism did you put in front of you just to keep you safe, mm -hmm. then, we can say, okay, how can we choose a new coping mechanism that's more in line with like the life you want, your desires and everything. And so we go from, it brings you from like unaware to aware, unlearning to relearning. And then we go to action and empowerment. And it's like, Mm -hmm. there's this process where you're aware of something, but it's not until you actually take action towards the thing that you're empowered through it. And so that's what transmuting is. We're changing the energy of suffering into energy of empowerment to give you the tools to take action to live a butterfly season. It's birthed from my own journey through therapy and microdosing and realizing that if you can ask the specific questions, you can get the answers that are within you. And it's so amazing when you know what type of question to ask, you get so much from it, but we don't even know what we don't know. And so this journal is here to give you the appropriate questions to help you kind of like transmute suffering, get out of cocoon season, live in a butterfly season. So that's the journal. Hopefully launching so in March. excited about that. We'll delay the episode to make sure it's out. Beautiful. So we'll link everything in the show notes for where people can yeah. find it for Thank sure. Thank you. Yes. Uh, and yes. the Butterfly Season podcast, it's a podcast where we celebrate the beauty and the transformation. So mm -hmm. we talk about microdosing. We talk about different therapy modalities. It's just 
um, a microdose, if you will, uh, to support your transformation because yeah. it can be hard and lonely, especially when you feel like you don't have a friend like mm-hmm. you to kind of like coincide journeys with. It's hard. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes you don't even want to do the work anymore. I'm like, life yeah. was easier when I was unaware, I feel like. When everything was happening to me. Like, how do I put this genie back in the bottle? <laughs> you know, and then you realize you can't. I know. And then Instagram would be it's butterfly season. So I T S butterfly and then season is S Z N. And then my personal Instagram is A I S H A. Just Aisha. Just Aisha. You are just magnetic. You are my favorite person to drop in with. I actually had this whole vision as we were recording this episode and I felt the same way when I was recording with Hannah earlier. I think this needs to become like a segment regular on this podcast of like an actual glimpse into like this girl gang that we have of like friends that are supporting one another through this journey because we all have these different stories, different versions of it. And this is ultimately like what we want to inspire people to find for themselves. You never know who's going to knock on your door tomorrow, friends. (laughs) She really never I mean, be careful. Maybe like have a vetting system because you just don't know. Yes. And and just to like reclaim energy around somebody dropping a million bucks at my door, I'm just going to like leave room for that to be a possibility. We want to call that back. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. we'll actually accept that. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. What's a recent powerhouse moment that you've had? We've. It would be fun to go back and document, like, what were they at I every know. interview? But what's a recent one right now? Like, what are you most proud of yourself for? I'm most proud of realizing that I'm the thumb. That, like, actually mm. just came to me this weekend. Like, literally. So many things in my life. I actually took myself through my own guided journal for the first time, believe it or not. I mean, I've taken other people through it, but like never like myself um, separately. And I just realized that like, I'm just doing things to keep me safe that I was doing when I was five. Yeah. And I'm not her anymore. Like I'm the thumb. If I can remove the thumb, I can fly. Mm -hmm. I'm not being held back by anyone but myself. And that I'm so proud of. There's no corresponding accolade to show for that at this moment. But the realization, once you realize you can't not take action around, I mean, you can, but it's really difficult to choose the wrong thing when you know the right thing. Mm. Mm. I love you so much. I love you. I love you. Thank you for just being like the best friend. Seriously. Like, Mm. I can't even, I might cry thinking about it, but like. Letting me cry on your couch, telling you that like nothing means nothing was like really huge. So I love you. you.